So here's the Generac GP5500 generator I bought a few years ago. And like many of these generators of its generation, uh, it has a leak that can occur from the carburetor. A dangerous leak, if you ask me. And if we take a look around the side of the generator, over here is the fuel shutoff switch. And when that's in the 12 or 6 o'clock position, fuel will go down into the carb and what happens is the float pin inside the uh, carburetor be can become stuck due to some corrosion usually due to ethanol based fuels like E10 which is the only type of fuel you can get in my area and you'll see fuel pouring out where I'm pointing up the top the carburetor out of the overflow along the sides of it and off the solenoid at the bottom and spraying out all over the ground and uh, this is very disconcerting to see and uh, no other small engines I have do this um, I believe it's a defect with the particular material that the float pin is made out of inside the generator and so I have previously replaced this float pin, um, but uh, the leak did occur about a year later again. And there's a tiny bit of corrosion on the current needle that was that's in there currently. Uh, to get past my power outage, I buffed that needle and put it back in. But today I'm going to be putting a plastic polymer OEM Honda needle in there, which is compatible. And hopefully, since it's made out of plastic, the E10 will not cause it to corrode. And hopefully I'll be past this potentially dangerous issue. Uh, Generac refuses to consider that uh, there's a, a, a materials defect here. Um, they usually blame dirt in the fuel line or dirt in the system or something like that or poor fuel old fuel um, but uh, none of those apply to me I use fresh fuel and stabilizer and I run the generator dry after every run and drain the carb bowl as from the screw that you see there in front uh, after every run as well so I don't leave fuel in the carb and uh, when I run it it's fresh fuel and it's clean fuel and it's got stabilizer in it. So many other people online I've read had similar experiences and unfortunately Generac has not recalled this unit. So we're going to skip ahead and um, you'll see a edited video of me pulling apart the uh, carb or at least getting to the carb first and taking it apart and replacing the flow pin needle with a polymer plastic OEM version, a Honda OEM version. Uh. Okay, so the first thing you'd want to do is removing the air filter. Um, and you probably could get away with not taking the air filter off if you just wanted to drop the bowl off the carburetor, but I think that's difficult to do. So I'm going to get rid of the air filter uh, whole assembly in order to pull the carb off the engine itself. Um, after I take it apart, you'll see there's a plastic middle piece here. Um, it's set in there by six screws. And um, so we'll just take them off. You'll notice um, also I'm going to remove a screw from the back of the air filter assembly. Um, and once we get the middle part out and we can take the entire back panel of it off as well.
These final two screws hold the carburetor on as well as the uh, back panel of the air filter assembly. So taking them off and also pushing out the rubber hose that leads to the, uh, that's the air intake for the engine, uh, should expose the carburetor. Be careful not to tear any gaskets. There's a number of gaskets. As you can see one here on the inside of the back panel of the air filter. And there's another gasket here on the side of the carb. Uh, you can usually reuse these gaskets. I haven't noticed any problem doing so. Although if you tear one, of course, you're going to have to either find another one that's correct for this carburetor or cut one yourself, I suppose. Okay, next we'll remove the fuel line from the carb and just drain out the trickle of gas that remains in the uh, hose there. Remember, we had shut off the, uh, the fuel valve from the tank, so uh, make sure you do that before you disconnect this and drain the carburetor bowl too. That'll make your life easier when you pull the carb apart. There won't be uh, fuel in the bottom. So I'll uh, speed up the film now, and we'll get to the point where we're disassembling the carb. Oh, a couple things to point out. When you take the assembly off for the choke control, make sure you recall how the pin goes into the black plastic uh, lever on top of the choke. And you'll also need to remember how the throttle arm is connected to the carburetor as well, uh, along with the tensioning spring. So if you are disassembling your machine like I am to replace a float pin, just remember how everything goes so you can successfully reassemble at the end. Another thing, be cautious when removing the screws to take the solenoid off the bottom of the carb. You can strip them very easily. Once you have the bowl off, uh, take this opportunity to clean it out with the bottom of the bowl here. Um, mine is clean. I last had this off, I don't know, some weeks ago. And uh, the only discoloration you see there is some rubber gasket around the rim. Uh, it's kind of integrated into the metal. It's been scrubbed, but it uh, doesn't look any cleaner. So there's the movement of the uh, float itself. And the gas, when the gasoline comes up, it just lifts that little plastic float, which pushes the um, float needle pin up into the cavity where it resides. So just take this apart carefully. There's a, lot, there's a few small pieces here you want to lose. And taking off the float itself, you'll see the needle is attached with its uh, spring. On here is the metal needle I have. It's a rotary part. Um, the original, as I said before, had some corrosion along with one of the uh, ridges on the side of it. And this one here uh, is pretty darn clean. Uh, there is one small spot that you might be able to see in the video, um, where it, which I believe caused it to stick along one of the raised sides of it. There's like four little ridges uh, on the uh, equally spaced along the, the, uh, the sides of the pin. 
and there's just a little black dark spot you'll see on one of the lands there right there and that, that's believe it or not that's that's what it was hanging up on now it's it looks really clean because I had buffed it last week uh, to get it going after a power outage when it stuck again so I've had it with these metal needles and I'm putting in a Honda OEM part and as you can see the in the brass cavity there where the needle goes there's there's no dirt there's nothing in there um, you know it's very clean and uh, I think the plastic part is going to prevent this from happening ever again. At least that's my hope. Now this new needle is a precise fit, but we'll put it in there just to make sure. And indeed, it's exactly the same size and dimensions as the metal needle we had before. It spins uh, easily and uh, moves up and down easily without any friction or catching. So I think this is a go. Okay, so I got the carb back, put all back together with the synthetic float valve needle in place. There's the carb back in position, uh, the, the intake into the air filter back in position, the assembly here for the choke lever, and the choke pull pin there. There's like a little pin in there. That's right in there. That's back in position. Um, air filter assembly is on. Fuel line is re-engaged. Okay. So everything is together. The throttle and the spring. The arm here to the throttle is in place. And we're already switched in the on position. I am going to open up the fuel and we'll see without even starting it up, of course, if we have a leak. The carb bowl should fill. Of course, we should see nothing from the outside here. Nothing should come out the overflow. This can take a good 15-20 seconds. So I'm going to let it sit here for about say a minute or so just to make sure we don't have any leaks. <laughs> 